Congratulations! You've decided to take your love of retro gaming to the next level. Chances are you've grown weary of emulators, thrown away countless hours trying to mod your NES to output to HDMI, or spent hundreds of dollars on modern hardware solutions. But at the end of the day, you want to enjoy your old school consoles on an old school display. And you've decided to do the sensible thing and find yourself a cathode ray tube standard definition television. Oh well, my friend in retro, there is good news and there is bad news when it comes to finding the perfect CRT solution for your vintage gaming needs. I am Seth Macy, an old man from the future who traveled backwards through time to warn my younger self not to throw out that 1080i widescreen CRT I bought in 2006. Unfortunately, I missed the time travel mark by... Ooh, 16 years, and that gorgeous set is long gone, but I can still share my knowledge of the future with you as you dig around in the past. I'm going to show you what to look for in a CRT so you can play your games as they were intended to be played on a 75-pound box of glass and metal. First off, let's talk about prices. About five years ago, you could go to almost any thrift store and the world was your oyster as far as CRTs were concerned. You could walk out with a very high quality Sony for like 10 bucks. Seriously, it was bananas. But then most thrift stores stopped accepting CRTs as donations and the salad days for collecting were over. That's not to say you can't find them. It's just very unlikely that you will. I somehow lucked into two 13 inch sets, one of which has a built in VHS player. Talk about a score! Both sets cost me around five bucks each, and if you're lucky and vigilant, and more than a little obsessive about visiting thrift stores like I am, you too might find a nice little set. Your next best bet, yard sales. In the score of a lifetime, I managed to bring home one of the holy grails of cathode ray tube televisions, a 27 inch Sony Wega Trinitron, and I paid nothing for it. I just showed up early, saw the free sticker, and dragged it away. Side note, I don't have it set up in my space because it's gargantuan, but I have tested it out and man, it really does live up to the hype. While you don't really have too much say in the matter anymore, the brands you know and recognize today are a good point of reference when you spot a CRT in the wild. In other words, that 13 inch Samsung is probably gonna treat you right, but that 13 inch realistic with the UHF and VHF dials, hmm, maybe pass on that one. After yard sales, you might luck out and find some on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, but free ones are becoming increasingly rare. I've started to see CRTs listed on Facebook as retro gaming TVs, and people are starting to ask for real money for them. No one is making these things anymore. There are fewer and fewer each day, but demand is starting to rise. Hence, people aren't just giving them away anymore. Now they often want your money for their old garbage. Least desirable way to get one in my opinion, but if you can find one you like and a model you want, it's probably worth throwing a few bucks after it rather than waiting around hoping someone's giving away that gorgeous old Trinitron. Oh, one more thing. If you have a local network affiliate TV station, send them an email. See if they have any old broadcast quality CRTs kicking around. Most of them were rated around 10 years ago. I was one of those people who rated them. But anyway, those old television engineers they hate to throw away equipment. They hate it. The PVMs require some research and aren't a plug and play solution, but the image quality is, uh, it's unparalleled. Okay, so you found someone in your area wanting to get rid of a CRT and it looks pretty nice. What exactly should you be looking for before you close the deal? Jacks. All of the jacks, or at least, at the very least, composite video. That's the yellow jack with a white and red jack for left and right channel stereo sound. Some cheaper sets will only have an antenna jack on them. You've no doubt seen it. It's the same threaded connection you use for modern cable television. Well, you can hook up older consoles via the RF adapter, but it is without a doubt the crappiest and worst way to do it. Plus the RF adapters are hard to come by because no one used them after 1990 or so. They're just garbage. One of the parts of the retro gaming hobby nobody talks about is how much time you spend hooking up and unhooking your consoles. So why not just hook them up once and forget about it? The more inputs your TV has, the better. I recommend visiting a thrift store and buying yourself a home stereo AV receiver and increasing your inputs even more. Or you can always 
just get a little switcher from Amazon or eBay or like even Walmart, actually. Composite is a step up from the lousy RF adapter, but if you want total control over picture quality, try to get a TV with S-Video or Component Video hookups. Granted, Component is mostly for later consoles like the PlayStation 2, which is weird to refer to the PS2 as a later console, but man, does it look good. Seriously, it's kind of amazing how good PS2 games look on a CRT with a component connection. You can also play GameCube games through component, although the GameCube component connector is outrageously expensive. I recommend playing GameCube games on a Wii hooked up with component. Wii component cables are not expensive at all, and you'll be surprised how good Wii games can look now that they're not being held up against the unfair competition of their HD console contemporaries. And yes, there are HD CRTs. I mentioned before I had one. It was 16 by 9. It had all the hookups I'd ever need, including HDMI. Retro games looked amazing on it. If you happen across an HD CRT, I say scoop it up. Well, call like three of your friends to help. They're very, very heavy. Anyway, as for S-Video, it's better than composite, but you might have a little harder time finding connectors for your consoles, and you might even have to mod them. Yeah. Not great. The list of consoles with S-Video support is kind of small. The standard sort of got eclipsed by component cables as far as consoles are concerned. If you have the choice between a CRT with a component and a CRT with S-Video, but not both, go for the component. And if you disagree, go to the comments, please. I would love to hear what you think. So, is it worth the trouble to play your retro consoles as they were originally intended to be played? No, God, no. When you factor in the weight, sourcing cables, the fact a lot of these consumer grade CRTs are near the end of their usable lives, it's a real dumb way to enjoy classic games, which in my opinion, makes it all the better. What good is a hobby if you're doing something useful? That's called a job, and I already have one of those. So, what do you think? Is it worth the time and effort to go full retro, or is an emulation solution all you need in your life? Hit the comments and tell me your preferred way to play, and I'd love to read some of your own CRT stories.